Hey everyone, welcome back to KBS Technocraft. Before we drive into today's video, I just wanted to take a moment to invite you to join my channel KBS Technocraft. If you like what you see, please consider hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so you never miss a video. In today's video, we are going to understand what is page object model, what is the advantage of page object model, and step by step page object model implementation of the existing uh, test cases what we have written without page object model. So let's get started and try to understand what is page object model. The page object model is very well known design pattern used in uh, software automation testing, particularly in web application testing to enhance the test code maintainability, readability, and usability. It is a way to structure the code for automation tests by encapsulating interaction with the web pages and their element. Let's say consider here in this, I have considered the e-card uh, e application, which we have considered for the previous examples. Here, if you see, if you try to uh, split the complete application into the web pages or let's say consider a page object model here, the first page object model we can consider here as a login page and then product and then cart and then this page object will be used inside our test case. So what exactly this page object will contain? A page object will be one-to-one -one mapping for the, all the elements and action are required or defined in that particular page. For example, if you consider a login page, login page has the user ID, password, and login button. So these three elements will be defined with that. If you have a login button action on click event, that action also will be part of the page object. So that's how if there is any change comes in future for a particular page or any new functionality being added to that particular page, then a developer or test automation developer need to work only on that particular page and include or append or modify those test cases based on the functionality what's been implemented. So that's how it's mentioned that it's a maintainability and readability because we know that each page object model with the corresponding web pages is mapped so that if any changes comes, we need to only change the code in the corresponding page object. Now let's understand in more detail about the page object. And then we will try to understand how we can implement this page object model into existing test cases which we have written. So the key advantage as we have discussed, separation of concern, each page object will be having a only one single responsibility which is related to interacting for that page action. For example, login which we have just discussed, for any interaction, or any, any changes or any operation which you want to perform on the login page must and need to be added into the login page object. So this separation makes the code more organized and easier ways to manage. A reusable component, page objects encapsulate the detail of a page structure and behavior allow you to reuse same page object in multiple test cases. For example, let's say consider you are having a car test cases, you are having a login test cases, and you are having product test cases. But this all test cases has to first uh, execute the login. That means the user need to log in on the system and then they can go for the product and then they select the product and they, they can add the car. So in that case, the login page need to define one time and same login page object can be used for any test scenario which is required to interact with the login page. So that's why it's mentioned the reusable component. Improve maintainability. When a structure of UI element and web page change, you only need to update the affected page. As I have mentioned earlier, as we know, this login page got changed, our product page got changed, our card page got changed. In that case, only we need to the, go to the corresponding page object and we need to add the element, modify the element, or add the action or modify the action. Enhance readability is very readable when we are having uh, this page object model uh, defined or implemented because you you know the login page, all the content 
and element and action methods are defined in login page. So it is make very easy to read those test cases, which is belongs to that particular page object or to identify all the action items to that particular page object. It also concise uh, the test script with the page object model test script mainly consists of high level action and other element identification and XPath and action methods are defined into the page object. So let's consider, we will consider the previous simple whatever we have done it. And here we have existing card, login, logout, and the product feature file, which we have defined the previous exercise. If you have not it uh, gone through my previous uh, videos, I request to please go through the part one and part two so that you will understand how we have written these test cases and how we have defined the uh, step definition in feature file. So I'm not going to repeat once again here, but just to give a overview, we are having eCart application, which is sample application, which I'm going to explain it uh, later. And then we have created this feature file for that particular application. We have run it and it works fine. Now, how do you implement? Because this does not use the page object model. So you will be uh, able to understand what is the advantage and disadvantage by going through this step. I'm going to create a new folder and that folder I'm going to re uh, name it as a page object. So I'm going to create a new folder and then new folder and that new folder i will give the name as a page object and then i will so i will give that page object okay and then okay basically it should be outside so let's put outside so we have a page object and then we will add the class file for each page we are going to add a class file here so for example i'm going to add here a class file called login page object so i will create login page object dot cs so let me create login page page object dot cs and then similar way i will add product and cart so let me add one more it's quite slow so i will add one more add new class here and then i will give that name products products and then let it create and then we need to create a new class file and that is called cart cart page object okay let's okay let's follow the standard uh, naming convention so i will rename this as a product products page object page object okay so we have it now the page objects are defined now now okay now let's go for the login page object so in the login page i will also open that particular website and we will see okay so login page is having field right so that is user id password and login button so i'm just copying this url and i will open into browser okay now let's 
define the login page address. We will make it public because we are going to use this. So I just uh, in other class. So I'm just making as a public. OK, now we need to create a IBEB driver object. So I will put IBEB driver and put driver. So we need to add the reference here. So we will add that reference for this particular. So we need to add the reference for Selenium driver. So I'm just adding it. OK, so I have added. Then we need to define a constructor. Let it add it, and then we need to define a constructor. Okay, let me define it using here, using and then it's a define. Okay, so it's skin. If you see here, it's skin. Okay, now we have to define constructor. So I'm going to define a public constructor. Public and then login page object. And then we need to pass this IBEB driver here. So we will pass IPEB driver here and then like this. And then we need to define this dot driver equal to driver. So this is how we have injected the driver into the page object. Now we have defined a constructor. Now we have to define elements. So elements, what are the elements are there? So let's say first define the element. So I will define here I web element. OK, so let's say login text box. Let's say login text box. I'm just login input box, input text. Input. So we are, we are going to write driver dot find element so driver driver dot b i driver dot driver dot OK, so we put like this driver dot find element. And then we will, since we have already identified those elements into the previous exercise, what we are going to do, we are going to copy it. Just we need to change the pattern. So we are going to copy it. So let's say we go into the login test steps. And what we are going to do that we are going to copy this. So we this is how we find out this element. So we need to copy this and we need to paste it here. Paste. Okay. So we have identified the login, and similar way, we are going to identify. the in the password field and let's say consider password and then here we'll put login button okay and then we are having one more we will define we'll change the export letter let's first define this that error Diff, whatever is there, just just put it error diff. Okay, so now we will go and try to find out what is the X path for those. So we will see here username we have already, and password is also is a password. ID is password. So we go into our page object and 
we will change this as a password because ID is password. Okay, now login button. So let's go there onto the login button and we see that what is the X path is there for login button. So for login button, this is X path. So let me copy this. Okay. We'll copy this and we will go to there. And these are by ID, but this is login button is by X path. So we will put it here by X path and we will put that value here. Yes. Right. So we will do like this. Okay, here since uh, we are having we are not having any parameter, we'll pass here login. That's fine. And this also is not required because we have hard coded this value, so that's fine. So this is this is for login button. Now the error message where error element where we are verifying that in case of incorrect password, errors are displayed. So in that case, what we are going to do that we are going to copy this CSS class and this we are going to copy. Now I will go to page object and then I will put that. So this is our error div where we are displaying the error message. Okay, so this is about the element. This is the element we have identified. These are the four elements are there in the login page and then we have defined it here. Now, how do you create an action method? So we will create public public set user ID, right? And then we will put that. So here we will put a string user ID. And uh, here you can define the type, whatever you want. You can consider a uh, white for time being. So let's say consider here we define white. Or we can mention enter user ID. Okay. And similar way, we need to have enter password. So let's say consider we'll create other method called public. public wide enter user password string password and inside code we will define that's time okay now what else we need to define a login click right so when you click on login we have to define that method here right so that also we need to define it click on login button right so we will define that as method as well public word click on login button login button right so we will do like this so as i mentioned we need to define all these attributes our element what is there in that particular page. Also, we need to define all the action which you are performing on that particular page. So now you have this method here. So this user ID where we need to say, you have to uh, set up in the uh, user ID input. So let's say here, user ID field. user id field fi okay field. okay then password input whatever you want so let's say consider i have given this name so i have to set user id field dot send is then user ID. this is what we have to mention because we need to set up that value when user click similar way here we have to do uh password input like this okay and then uh, we need to 
click that event. So which element we have to click? Login button. So we will click on the login button. That click. So you have defined all this here and all the actions and elements what is required for login button. So this is what the page object should contain. Now, how do you use this page object? So we will in this we are going to use it into the Selenium definition file. So Selenium definition file, uh, uh, let's say login. We are first doing for login, so we will go on login. So what we have done it here, I am on the this particular web page and then we are putting driver dot this. So it's okay because this is something which is navigation. It's not part of login. So that's okay. Now I enter username. Now here we have to, so we have to create login page object. Login page object equal to new login page object. Okay, so we need to add the reference of that. So I have added it here now. And then it's required a constructor, which is so I will pass driver here. Okay, now what we have to uh, use it here like login page object. So here, login page object dot enter user ID. And user ID is coming as a username, let's say consider user name. Right, so we have done this similar way. We need to copy this and we need to pass here and paste it. Okay, and then we will use login page object dot enter password and then we will click password that's it All right we have done that okay now we will come in this line for reference purpose only we'll say that now click on login button so we will click on login button here we will put like this and we'll uh, define this login page object so let me com copy this login page object here then semicolon was missing and then I did. Okay, so now uh, we have to define here as well. So we will copy it and we will paste it here. Okay, and then we will login page object dot click login button. Okay, so if you see here, I should be, let's say consider uh, this, this should be here. Okay, that's fine because this is something navigation part. This is fine. And then this error message, uh, we need to check that this is displayed. So we can put that also. Let me put that also. Error message displayed. So public bool. or let's say a public bool is error masses displayed, right? And then uh, we will try to put it here and then uh, we will try to return that, uh, return. And this DB is enablement is a display, so I will just put it copy paste here, dot enabled. That's it. If error message is displayed, then it will so that. So now I will go to the login page definition and I will instead of doing this all, I will check is true and then I will copy this login page object. Okay, now I will paste it here. Paste and just call it that method here. So we will press is login method display, login message display, nothing to require to pass. And this, this is what 
we have migrated traditional login step definition to use the page object model. Again, we can create this page object model into the constructor of this login step definition that we will uh, do when we uh, do the further exercise. But this is just for explanation. We have done this. Now we'll go in the test explorer and try to see whether this test case is working fine or not. So let me build this solution now. There is some error. Let me build this. Okay, so there is there is something where missing semicolon. Okay, let me check anywhere else. No. So go on the solution explorer and we will build this solution. And we'll try to run the logging test scenario and we see that that it works fine. So in that case, we will be able to complete this login login uh, from the basic traditional way to page object model implementation. So if the build is going on, uh, once the build is going uh, complete, uh, we can run this. Now we are going to run the test cases, which we have just migrated from the traditional way to page object models. I am running these test cases now. As build was successfully happened, so it's going to run the test case. And it will show you the test result here. Similar way, we have modified other test cases to use page object model. So I will not go through the each line of code, but yes, I will go through each step and explain it what migration code we have done it with compared to the previous test cases which we have written without page object model so test cases are executed now so this you see this negative scenario is running and then we can see all those two, two test cases which we had migrated using login page object model is working fine so let's uh, quickly go and uh, uh, look at that the page object model so this is login page object model and here we can see we have created all the elements whatever required like username password login button and then error message and then what we did it we have created method for enter user id enter password and these methods are used into that particular class file so if you go into the step definition let's say go login step definition file and you can see all this now there is no export defined inside this step definition all is coming from the login page object model now similar way i have updated all the test cases to use page object model so let's go here in the car speed object whatever i have done it i have created a constructor as usual i have just explained it and then i have added the all the attributes required for a cart and then i have added method add to cart add personal information continue and finish uh, checkout button similar way i have created products in products i have added the few filter button filter high to low and product uh, first element when you click on search uh, filter and then i have added few methods here whatever is required so if you go in the step definition file uh, this is step definition file are modified now we are using now page object model and then we are calling the page object method. So that's how if you see if there is any change happens, let's say consider if any change happen on that particular page, only we need to come here and update this export file. There might be a possibility that UI design got changed and you change something in export. So in that case, you know, this is related to login. You will be able to change it here and your test case will work fine. So that's how the maintainability and reusability works here. So let me go ahead and run the test explorer. I run the, all the test cases. So I'm going to run all the test cases. And you can see all the test cases should and must pass. So it's, it's a started execution. It will take few seconds because what I did it, I uh, uh, added something, some code, and then it will build. Once this build happen, what will happen? It will run all the test cases, which are there in this test. So for example, cart is having two test cases, login is having two test cases, logout is having one and product is having uh, one test cases. So this all test cases are going to run it now. 
if you see as usual it's running the test cases now this is the first test case which is running about the login and then the next test case will run uh, uh, which is related to uh, logged user it's going to take a few minutes okay so i hope you understand the page object model and this solution i'm going to check in into github i'm going to provide the previous video link as well as this github link for all this uh, code repository you can refer it if you are facing any issue drop me message on comment box or if you have any suggestion please drop a message on comment box and thank you so much for watching my channel thank you